Good day, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new segment. I call this five hot takes from the round. We're going to be speaking about five takes from round one of the NRL. This is going to be a weekly little installment. Rather than doing a whole round one recap, I thought it would be good to summarize five things that I think from the round that are definitely worth talking about. So uh, we're going to be talking about the Rabbitohs and their depth. We're going to be talking about the Storm is still the Storm as, as a section one. We're going to be talking about the Newcastle and the Warriors Ford Packs. We're going to be talking about rookie guns, uh, mainly Dane Laurie tonight. We're going to talk about the new colours for the team. Uh, obviously, there's lots of new players in New Jersey, so I'm mentioning that. As well as topic number five will be the new rules. So uh, let's get straight into it. Five hot takes. The first take that we're going to be talking about is basically about the Rabbitohs and Storm game. Two topics here, but two very classy teams that a lot of people, including myself, both have these team in their top four. The Rabbitohs depth. Now, we've seen just how good the Rabbitohs have been in recent seasons. They've had some struggling periods, but overall, three prelims, obviously losses, which is unfortunate, but one thing this season coming into it is huge is their depth. Now, the experience of, of Jai Arrow coming into their forward pack, you've got Benji Marshall, who was absolutely fantastic for them the other day. I didn't think the Rabbitohs were outstanding the other night, but I really like what I saw of Benji Marshall. He could provide a lot of utility for them. Um, I didn't mention him in the new colours segment, but we'll talk about uh, Josh Mansour. Josh Mansour, I believe he scored a try the other night as well. Um, yeah, the Rabbitohs' depth looks good. You've also got Jacob Host. You've got Latrell Mitchell at fullback, but he can also potentially play centre. You've got a bunch of centres as well that can come in for injury. You've got Braden Burns. So this team's looking really good. They've got a really good roster and a lot of depth about them to like based on round one. Uh, the other topic is that the Storm is still the Storm. What I mean by that is the culture around this club, as well as the coaching of Craig Bellamy, is what is leading to success. Amy Park has become an absolute fortress in recent years for the Melbourne Storm. We saw just how good they were with Pappenhausen. He was absolutely outstanding, if not one of the players of the round. You also had Cameron Munster, who had an outstanding game. Jerome Hughes. Uh, Brandon Smith was great the other night. Harry Grant is going to be their main hooker, and Brandon Smith was great, and the Storm still won by eight points. So the Storm is still the Storm. They're not going anywhere. I can't see them dropping out of the top four. They were really good to watch. Hot take number one. Take number two is the Ford Packs. Now, everybody has a pretty good Ford Pack in the NRL. Uh, Parramatta, Storm. But for me, two teams that haven't been great in regards to their Ford Pack in recent seasons, but looked really good. We're only going off round one, though, so it's interesting to think this, is the Newcastle Knights. Now, we'll talk about their Ford Pack. You've got David Clemmer. You've got Daniel Saifidi. Aiden Guerra has obviously left the side. You've got Tyson Frizzell, who I've said for a while could be this missing piece of the puzzle. I originally, before I was absolutely bullied, had the Knights in the top four. They showed that this weekend. It's only round one. It's only the dogs, so uh, not sure what to think there. But I really like what I saw of their full pack, especially Daniel Saifidi. He had a fantastic game. You've also got Jacob Saifidi coming off the bench. Connor Watson, who was at lock. Uh, he might go to 5'8", potentially, now, though, with um, Kurt Mann's injury. Uh, the other team is the Warriors. Now, the Warriors' defense was absolutely outstanding against the Titans. Their forward pack, Adam Fenua Blake, uh, ben Modoc Masilla, uh, Jermaine Tanua Brown, uh, Eli Katoa, uh, who else is there? Tohu Harris. Like, that is a really, really solid four pack. You've also got Bailey Sirinan, who a lot of people rate from the South Sydney Rabbitohs off to the Warriors. So, I really like what I saw from these two four packs. And you know what? I've got to include them in these hot takes because I thought they were really good to watch. And, uh,. Both of these teams really could be in for a big season. The funny thing is that they battle each other this week. I'm not excited for many clashes in round two, if I'm being honest with you. But the Knights and the Warriors kind of excites me because of these four packs and just how good they went in round one. Take number three. Now, it's funny because there were probably a few rookie debuts. And I'm speaking more, I guess, in the new colours, which is the next segment. But... I've got to include Dane Laurie here. He was just absolutely outstanding at the back for the Tigers. 
Harry Grant co uh, covered, carried, it's not covered, carried the Tigers in 2020. And we really could see a similar story with Dane Laurie at the back, tackle buff, taking high catches, uh, try savers. He was just absolutely fantastic to watch. We've seen a little bit of him from the Panthers, but nothing too special. And uh, I like what I saw from him. I think he's an absolute rookie gun. I know it's only one game and... Charlie Staines had that one game, and he wasn't great on the weekend, but uh, well, he didn't score a try. But, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. I like what I saw from him. Let me know in the comments if there's anyone else that you can think of as a rookie gun. There probably is people in the back of my mind that I'm not really thinking about. I guess you could say Lachlan Lamb for the Sydney Roosters as well. But, uh, yeah, I like what I saw with Dane Laurie, so he's hot take number three. One. Segment number four is something that I'm really looking forward to chatting about. might be the longest in the video. It's the new colours. Obviously, round one, we might see some of this throughout the season, but main talking point for round one is how did the players in their new jerseys go? There are a few. There are a lot, so I didn't go through all of them. Our first one, I mentioned his utility and the depth of the Rabbitohs. I think Benji Marshall in his new colours off the bench look really exciting. We've seen a lot of his leadership and his starting side, but we haven't seen this side to him for a long time, if not the beginning of his career. So... It was good to see Benji in new colours. Um, I've obviously been a big fan of him at the Tigers. Going to miss him there, but like what I'm seeing. Uh, number two, the missing piece of the puzzle, potentially, for the Newcastle Knight. He was outstanding, along with the rest of their four-pack. Tyson Frizzell. Frizzell in Knight's colours, he had a big game. He's done it for the Dragons, which has played Origin, but he really, really turned up and played some good footy on the weekend. So I was really excited by him. Now, one recruit for a team that I was really looking forward to seeing, and I thought he would be outstanding. It's only round one, so I'm not judging, but I didn't like what I saw from Nick Kotrick. I didn't think he did much for that Bulldogs team, unfortunately. I thought he was a much better player at Canberra. I'm going to give it around five to six rounds to make a full judgment, because I think he's a player with a lot of potential. He's played Origin as well, but um, out of these players, I was a little bit disappointed in his new colours. Moving on to Kyle Flanagan from the Roosters. Very successful season. Off to the Bulldogs. He was fantastic in a struggling side. Um, he created some really good plays. So, honestly, I see the Bulldogs being closer to the bottom than the top eight if I'm going off that one game. I think the thing about the Bulldogs is they'll be able to hang in and, and come close with a lot of teams. But, unfortunately, teams will kind of run away with it. You could see them losing by four, but it becomes a 14-plus, that type of storyline. So, a little bit unfortunate there for the Dogs. We talk about the Parramatta Eels here, and I'm talking about Isaiah Papalihi. I thought Isaiah Papalihi was absolutely fantastic for him, for us, if not one of our best players on the field, between Papalihi and Marty for me. Um, but Papalihi in those new colours from the Warriors, very good signing for us. I didn't mention Tom off the check, but I thought he was okay. Adam Fanil Blake, he provided a huge impact from the Warriors. I can't wait to see him offload the ball more and, and get some ball away. I mentioned uh, earlier in, uh, not here, but I filmed a little video with... Uh, Rugby League Lounge on Instagram, uh, how Adam Fadil Blake likes to offload the ball to centres, and uh, Ewan Aitken looks like he could be gone for a while. So, Speaking of centres, Paul Mamorowski. We've seen him in four different clubs now in four different years, and uh, look, I like what I saw from him. I thought he had a really solid Panthers debut. He obviously disallowed a try, um, which we'll speak about in, round five, in take number five. And then my buy of the year at this current stage, I thought he was outstanding after 600 games of football. Without, he looks so hungry. Ryan James at the Canberra Raiders, for me, was the standout for the new colours. Well, let's get into the controversial topic of topic number five, which is new rules. Yes, topic number five is the new rules. Now, I want you to let me know in the comments what you thought of them over the weekend. We didn't see all of them, but saw less scrums in the game. I really love a scrum, so um, interesting one there. The big one for me that is quite negative and... Oh, it's gonna it's gonna go the wrong way towards para, and I'm gonna get really really frustrated this season. Is the control that has been given to the bunker? Basically, guys, if you haven't been watching rugby league and you're watching this video, uh, in rugby league, the referee makes an on-field decision of try. They used to be able to go upstairs, and the bunker would check it. Now the referee has the ability to call a try, and the bunker has control to overturn that decision after a try has been given by the referee. Now, referee, this is their job, to make an on-field decision. I can understand going up to the bunker if you are unsure, but this whole 60 minutes where the bunker can interfere needs to go. We saw it against the Dragons. We saw it for Momorowski, I believe. We saw it for uh, the Tigers against the Raiders. Arguably, 
yeah, they may have been the right call, but we need to trust in our referees. We've been saying how bad they are for a long time now, my myself included, but I feel like we need to have more respect for those on the field. We have obviously gone back to one referee, which is a step in the right direction, but this game is taking a lot of steps in the wrong direction, and I'm really, really disappointed by it. Um, one thing we didn't see that a few people were thinking, the commentators included, was the two-point field goal. Obviously, kicking from 40 or 30, 40 metres out, I believe, is worth two points now of a field goal. So that's a really interesting new rule. But a lot of new rules for the game. Let me know what was your least favourite and your favourite in the comments. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, I'd like to uh, know. But anyway, guys, this has been five, oh, not ten, five quick Hot takes in regards to the NRL round one season. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow for my round two tips.